Hello, good morning. I'm so glad that you're with me. This is today's Good Morning Talk. It is December 30th, and it is a beautiful day out. Actually, well, <laughs> any day that I can be outside is a beautiful day. <laughs> any day that I can be outside with you is even a more beautiful day. Uh, it is actually pretty cloudy and uh, a mist. A mist is coming down. It had rained overnight, and uh, I figured that it would be still good enough. I checked the radar, and it looks like that it's not going to pour. So I risked coming out here and uh, doing this uh, live stream out in the yard. I think it's going to be okay. It's supposed to be partly cloudy, but on a day that we're doing a talk on celestial signs, it's not a very good day to look up into, <laughs> up into the sky because <laughs> you can't see it. It's all gray, all gray with clouds. Here in actually the uh, northeast of the United States in New York, and uh, but it's still uh, I'm out here with my uh, my chickens and ducks and pigeons, and uh, and with you, and so hey, listen, I want to start off real quick. I want to do a quick thank you uh, to all of you out there who are who are watching and participating in this time together. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, part two of the celestial uh, celestial signs. Very general discussion. Uh, on Tuesday, we kind of had a really kind of like a long talk on um, on the warnings, you know, on the warnings to as we look at this kind of stuff. And these are the things that are going to be also brought up in the future as as they they take place. I'm going to actually be focusing a little bit more on these events that take place in the heavens as we move forward, because I, I think they have played and continue to play uh, a big part in what's happening today. OK, they have throughout history. Right. As God uh, put the stars, everything in the heavens for us to to look at, uh, not only to take care of us physically in regards to uh, how the uh, universe is, is all played out, uh, but, all, but mainly too also for signs and seasons so that literally it's all part of this one creation that God made and that when things ha things literally are affected here. Uh, on earth by literally this, the signs that are in heaven, or I should say things play out here on earth in the timing of certain things. So as we watch, you know, uh, it, it can be a little bit more exciting. Um, not that we really need any more excitement, right? <laughs> but if we want to keep a, keep a calm uh, spirit about us uh, through this, uh, counting on our Lord God to carry us through as children of God, um, we can rejoice and, and have peace uh, that goes beyond any type of understanding that mankind could ever give. And so I can sit here with a smile, even knowing all the stuff that's been going on uh, in this world. And I can sit here and I can have confidence in knowing that we are in God's hands. Uh, those of us who have come to know our Savior and uh, have received eternal life uh, through his forgiveness of sin. And it's just absolutely fantastic. It really is. And um, but you know, uh, I'm a man of faith, uh, but I'm also a realist. I pay attention to what's what right in front of me, and I realize that there are things um, that are very hard that that we talk about. That I tried to talk vaguely about, you know, without bringing out super detail. There's plenty out there that gives us super detail. Uh, this is a place to come to to. to kind of like be a little, get a little more balanced and, and find a little peace as we recognize these things that are happening around us in our world. Um, but take the time to reflect on who God is and who Christ is, um, his anointed one, the father's anointed one, his son, and that, that great relationship that you can have with him through all this stuff as we move forward. And so when you look at the celestial signs, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of some previous signs that I was kind of like watching. And then I'm going to kind of like then ha kind of like say, hey, let's let's come together as long as we can do this. Let's come together in the future and um, start uh, continuing to look. We're going to continue to look at the at the uh, celestial signs in the heavens, uh, either be uh, eclipses or even what the. Some of these telescopes are, are bringing in that have been uh, shot up into the sky for us to to uh, watch and see. We'll see. We're going to just take our time as uh, as long as God gives us here online uh, to be together. 
All right. Uh, enough of that. What I want to do here is I want to show you something. I got a gift, and I, I like to show the gifts. <laughs> People, say, there's a box here. And this came all the way from Australia. I can't believe it. What's what sweet people? Actually, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you their names. Uh, it's Ann and Leanne and Zach. Okay, uh, first names only. Uh, but they're from Australia, and they sent me this little care package uh, with photos, uh, just wonderful photos, and uh, of them. Uh, they're actually having a little Bible study, and they're making the. That those uh, pumpkin cookies that my daughter made, they got the recipe for that, and they uh, they are having they're having uh, their Bible study with the cookies, and then they sent me a whole box full of things from Australia, cook you know things I can snack on from Australia. Okay, I have no idea what these things are. Um, different type of marketing and different types of products here that uh, was was sent to me. Uh, from Australia, <laughs> Vegemite. Uh, it's like a spread, and I heard I, 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 I don't know. I've never tried it really, but I heard you have to use it very lightly. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that out today. And they also sent me a mug, <laughs> another mug. My wife is like, "How many mugs do you have?" <laughs> but they, what they did was very sweet. What they did was they made a frank mug with the love peace and joy which you see on the corner of the of the videos especially on youtube there's a little corner piece love peace and joy they put that up there and they took photos of place their places in australia um where they live and they put it on a mug for me so that i could visit them in a way uh beautiful little mug and i just want to say thank you what great photos and uh, what a beautiful country uh maybe one day i don't know we'll see uh, I know I got a welcome to come. That was very nice. And so I just wanted just to share the, that with all of you. I even got some Australian uh, stuffing for the box. <laughs> so actually what I'm going to do is I have also today on my, uh, on my mug here, uh, I have a, a tea, right? Celestial seasonings, right? <laughs> using that. Today I'm using a lemon zinger. Uh, and I actually put two bags. I like that heavy lemon taste, right? Ah, wow, that's ah, excellent. And I did, I put, actually, I didn't put half and half. I put a uh, heavy cream in it. So it's like a, uh, very good. It's uh, it's delicious. And so I'm going to have that. And I'm going to open up this, this bag here. Let's see if I can get this open. This is a... Uh, Arnott's, Arnott's Tim Tam, They're like a cookie, like a chocolate covered, it says the most irresistible chocolate biscuit, all right, so I'm going to try one, here we go, thank you Australia, <laughs> oh. that is like, what can I compare it to here in the States? It's like if you take an Oreo cookie, chocolate Oreo cookie, and dipped it in chocolate. But it's not as the Oreo cookie has a, a real deep taste. This is more of a, a, a little lighter version of that. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Very sweet, very sweet of you to do that, and uh, I, that's why I wanted to let it show everybody because I just wanted you to know. Hey guys, I wanted you to know uh, about your online community, the people that are out there. Uh, we're, we're all real people here, sitting and talking each day and enjoying each other's company, looking at the things. You get to see my little quackers there in the background uh, as they walk around the yard. You know, when it's really wet out after a good rain, they love going around. And uh, enjoying uh, sticking their um, bills in uh, in the in the ground, looking for grubs, and uh, so they're they're very happy today. We got Loki, Loki on the other side of the camera, running around in front of me. She's chasing something. I don't know what it is, but she's out here also. And uh, I'm going to take another bite of this if you don't mind. Boy, that is good, very good. 
I hope you're enjoying uh, your day so far and having your uh, the be your beverage if you're sitting with me right now live or later on on the replays. Um, all right, let's get into this. So we we talked about on Tuesday the warnings, and the warning was basically this: that we can enjoy, we can research, we can look at, we can see how important the um, creation is and how god put things into place but the warning is is that we don't worship it we don't give it any more value or put it above god okay we don't we don't re replace creation with god we don't worship creation okay the power is with god all right the power is with the god of abraham isaac and jacob the god and father of our lord jesus christ okay that is where the true power is that is where all creation came from all right. So we the warning is not to worship creation because actually that is that's associated with the wrath that is coming. That is associated with the, the degrading of morality and ethics in a society when they reject the creator and worship the creation. All right. So that was Tuesday. We talked a long time about that. Now we're going to move into sort of some of the things that I have noticed in the in just even just let's say take the past 10 years because you know we can go further than that and if i do go further than that um it, it, in conversation i just want to i just want to just say okay let's say it's 2021 right the last the last two days of 2021 december 30th we're going to be moving in 2022 okay so let's take the like the last 10 years let's go to, back to 2011 okay and since we're talking biblical events which is key to everything that we're going through now. All right, right. Part of creation, part of the timeline that we have here in mankind, and God using Israel, God uh, working out the things that are happening on this earth. We are um, we're in a time where literally uh, Israel is back on the globe. Okay, and literally in in the last generation okay so that's uh like i said i think it is um let's see 2000 it, it, i think there's 74 uh the 74th year okay so i mean we mentioned that a generation in the bible is 70 years a strong generation is 80 years so we're looking at that time period between 70 and 80 years okay we have to focus on israel israel is key god didn't bring israel back for nothing okay this is all part of what he is doing here on this earth his son is returning christ uh, jesus yeshua he is returning the messiah is coming again all right came the first time provided salvation to all he's coming the second time to rule and as we get closer to that date Things are going to happen. Jesus said that you're going to see signs and, and wonders. There's going to be things happening. Okay. Right, Quackers? Right. <laughs> They're right, they were right here in front of me. Easily distracted. Anyway, um, it's okay. It's all right. You can hang out here with me. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> here. You, you could probably. No, I won't do that. I won't do that. They'll come around. It's all right, guys. It's all right. <laughs> um, all right. So just like the sign, remember we were talking about the uh, the wise men, how they were paying attention to when Christ came the first time. All right. And they, they got to experience. They got to be there in worship of him because they were paying attention. They were watching. All right. And they had they had a tremendous understanding of, of what was going on. Uh, prophetically, they understood the scriptures. Uh, and they were paying attention to as they watched, okay, a lot more than I do, a lot more than a lot of us do, okay? Uh, there are a lot of people out there that are focusing on a, a, the heavens a lot. <laughs> Their lives are devoted to it, and that's in reference to even that new that telescope that on Christmas Day. What a date to pick, to, you know, just amazing. Um, and, it, and it was delayed, so it's kind of interesting how it fell on that day, however, the, you know. Uh, French Ghana, uh, that's, that's, that's where it took off from. Uh, it was actually, I said France, but I meant it's a, it's in uh, South America, but uh, it's the French uh, uh, Ghana. And I'm, I hope I'm saying that right. 
But I then checked that out. It was actually uh, right off the edge of um, the coast uh, where the tropical rainforest is. And uh, um, they shot up this this incredible telescope that they've been working on for 20 years, $10 billion. And, it, and it's up. Everything seems to be going well. I put the links in the last video uh, that on the Tuesday video where you can go and you can actually watch the tracking of it as it gets into position and you can see in less than a month it's going to be ready and set to start doing what it's supposed to do so we're going to start seeing interesting i don't know how long it's going to take before we actually get images um i've, I've read some things that said it sometimes it can take up to six months um i don't know but all i know is that it's interesting timing it's in place it's going to be the most powerful telescope uh and images that we're going to get of deep space uh that they're they're looking to find out more information of what's out there how does it play out here on earth uh it's very interesting to see uh it's like when we saw started seeing the images from the hubble uh and it, that's been up there for a very long time uh and just incredible images of, of what's out there and if anything it, it should just increase your faith in who who God is, is the incredible complexity and, and um, how, how, how huge, how massive his creation is. Uh, it just, it should, it, and I hope it does, increase your faith when you see these things. Of, of And it, it should also do, it should humble you, all right? It should humble you as you look at this stuff and you say, here we are uh, in beings with, with the ability to um, talk, uh, and communicate and live and participate in creation and it's in its vast array of of imagination and creativity uh being lived out in flesh be it animals or mankind and and even all the little things that are here on earth just a how everything works together and how everything has to work together or else there's chaos disruption and destruction and so, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just fun and encouraging to talk about. So, like, in finishing this last video of, of 2021, with all the, the things that are going on, the hard, hard things that are going on, I, I sit here with a smile on my face because I, I, I want to just stop and just rejoice in the things um, that I'm seeing. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do, even if it's in a time that's very hard. Um, God never lets go of you, okay? He never lets go of you. Remember that. Part of what I just want to remind you, part of the things about being here is is, is that encouragement you're going to get in an understanding of who, who Jesus is, what he did for you, and the Father, and abiding in him. And if you read the book of John, fantastic um, testimony of the words that Jesus gave to his disciples right before he was going to go to that cross, that Passover meal, the words that he said, shared with them and that deeper understanding of who he was and who the father is in the relationship that he has with the father. And then also our relationship with him in the father, just a, a one. And then he gives us a perfect, beautiful examples of how to live here uh, until his return. And then we know, to know that he empowered us with the Holy Spirit uh, afterwards. And the early church began as the word spread. And God was, God was doing an incredible work in the lives of many people. Here we are 2,000 years later, right? 2021, approximately 2,000 years later, uh, enjoying that same um, real gift of eternal life in his son. That peace that we can have in him is real. And we, we see testimonies and stories throughout the ages of people that in the midst of horrific events, they were able to find peace and purpose as God would place them in particular places to be a, um, a light to the world and a, a benefit to another. And so, so that's what makes me excited going into this new year is that no matter what comes, Lord willing, we will be exactly where he, he wants us to be. And the timing and everything as it plays out, even in the heavens, is uh, there for us to witness. And if he, if he wants to take us home, so be it. Okay. <laughs> we're ready to go. Um, but while we're here, we want to be in his will. 
and we want to take things uh, one thing at a time and, and try to be, at least for me, especially for me, uh, and I'm speaking of myself because I'm feeling my heart now <laughs> as I'm speaking with you. Some of the, the topics that we talk about, um, it, it wasn't like before where I never felt my heart. I'm at a point now that I got to be cautious about my heart and I and to not to take on any more uh, stress because I'll feel it. But sometimes when I get excited about it, um, about things, my heart starts, I can start feeling my heart or, or if I'm, I'm feeling the weight of things around me, I'm, I feel my heart also. And so <laughs> I figured I'd share it with you. <laughs> All right. So, so looking at, looking at previous signs, why do I pay attention? Well, before, before my eyes were open to a lot of the things that were happening in that hidden realm. Okay. I, I focused a lot on that enhanced paying attention to the prophecies and the scriptures and the things to watch for. Okay. So there were certain prophecies that had to take place and I, and, and they don't just, you know, magically pop. There it is. No, usually they're set up. Usually you, you come to a, a place where they're fulfilled, but you can see it coming because you're watching movement. You're watching what happens here on earth. You're watching society, how they, how, how it slowly moves into a different ideology or a belief system or morality, uh, you know, mor different level of morality. You, you can see it coming and the, the slow erosion of certain things and then the setup of nations, okay? So what I've noticed is, I'll just say, I'll say like even in 2011, okay? And let me start with like eclipses, solar eclipses, total solar, annual or solar, and then lunar eclipses. Uh, blood moon uh, uh, lunar eclipses, okay? And then the, the dating of those eclipses, okay? What particular dates? What happened in the areas that these eclipses took place? What important things uh, took place here on Earth? What major events took place, global events? And lots of times it's when, it's when something dramatic takes place, dr something dramatic happens. An example, okay, um, we had uh, in 2011, right, huge, huge year, okay, and we had certain eclipses. There was one, um, let me see if I have this. I know I wrote some of this stuff down. Um, no, I didn't write it down. <laughs> I don't have the exact dates. Let's just say in 2011, there was a, a total solar eclipse that began in Japan, right? And what happened to Japan in 2011? They had that massive tsunami. You remember that? That was uh, an incredible natural disaster that happened uh, in that same year that they got touched by that total solar eclipse. Now, solar and lunar eclipses happen... Um, you know, at least sometimes it's, it, it can happen uh, at least twice a year. So it, it's always taking place someplace on the earth. But you, you can actually, because everything is in sync, because when you, when you look at the heavens for, you know, since the beginning of creation, God placed it there, right, for signs and seasons, they're in sync. You can literally mathematically go forward, you can go forwards, and you can go backwards. And you can find out. And with the technology today, they can literally find out where the shadows are going to be on the earth. And uh, let me just um, let me just give you a couple of websites. All right. I'm going to put this in the description area so that you can click on it, too. But there's a couple of websites that if you don't know where to go to look, there's a lot of stuff out there. And there's a lot of really good stuff out there. But I use these two because they're simple and they have a kind of kind of neat little graphics that you can click on and view. Uh, the website is time and date, time and date .com. Uh, A lot of you probably have heard of it uh, when you're trying to figure out uh, dating. OK, a lot of people go that it pops up on the search engines usually first, but it's very good. And they have a, a great page there. You just go along the top bar and they have a thing on eclipses and it'll, it'll give you like eclipses, solar and um, and lunar eclipses. It'll give you great graphs and um, different things, tools you can use to literally see the dates, the future dates of uh, these events um, that will take place on Earth, where it's going to take place on Earth, where is the total eclipse is going to take place, partial eclipses, all that kind of stuff. 
and uh, is a great tool. Another one that's a great tool in looking at the at the heavens and the celestial uh, uh, movement of the planets and the different meteors and stuff is uh, Sea Sky. Sea Sky dot org. Okay, C S E A Sky S K Y dot org. Okay, you just go to that, and they have a whole bunch of stuff. It's it's a, a guy that put it together. He lives in Florida, and this is like his hobby. And he looks at things in the sea, and he looks at things in the sky. But there's a page there that you can actually go to that literally has uh, all the years and the dates um, where you can like go back or go forwards and see what's what is mathematically going to take place in the celestial in this in the heavens um and be able to be you know be prepared be ready to say okay well on this date this is going to happen with the moon or with a meteorite or with or with a um uh uh meteorite shower i should say um, all those different things, conjunctions in a, when the planets align together, when they uh, do all those uh, wonderful things that they do that we pay attention to, um, all that stuff's up there. You can actually go backwards and forwards. So, like when I look at like even natural disasters uh, that have that has happened, uh, like 2011, okay, and, and, the, and the eclipse went all the way through. If you look at the eclipse in 2011, it started in Japan but went all the way through across uh, Russia, uh, all the way across. Um, and that was also the very beginnings of that horrific civil war north of Israel, okay? The, right, the Syrian civil war. And you started seeing the Arab Spring, late 2010, moving into that Syrian war. That it, that's a key. That was key in, in a biblical prophecy. Absolutely. That's one of those setup moments that I'm talking about, okay? Now, since then, throughout those, we had some interesting uh, uh different types of eclipses, okay, like a lunar eclipse, a blood moon lunar eclipse. There are, uh, in dating, there are some of those that are very interesting uh, that fall on a uh, Jewish holidays, uh, holy days, and, they're, and they are in sync in references, four of them, and usually are four blood moons in a row. They call them tetrads. And um, they, what's interesting is, is that when these tetrads, take place and they they don't happen a lot but it's interesting that in the last 100 years they happened three separate times and every single time they happen when when the blood moon that lunar that lunar eclipse fell on these jewish holy days something major happened in israel first of all it's creation right 1948 and 1950 they had they had these blood moon right it's like a checkpoint Okay, a checkpoint of things that happen within the timeline of uh, in history, right? The historical timeline of mankind. Uh, then in 1967, 1968, Israel, what happened then? That was that the uh, six day war that they had where they, they um, uh, gained access to Jerusalem. All right, so they got back in the land, right? And then they gained uh, Jerusalem in that six day war. And then again in 2014 and 2015, there was another major event. And that 2014, 2015 was after that 2011, right? During that, what was happening north of Israel, right? As, as Syria was in this, you know, the, the world was at war in Syria at that time with ISIS and, and with Turkey and all that stuff that was going on. Movement of the nations, right? And the United States, right? They started to step back. You know, I think Obama was president, and the, the, a void was left. Well, that last tetrad, it finished with that last blood moon in September 2015. All right? So in the heavens, we were getting that sign. Well, what major event took place there? Well, Russia moved in to Syria to take control and become a shield become a shield, a guard for the Syrian government and the nations that were in agreement with each other. What is how, if, if you know Bible prophecy, why is that significant? Okay. That's, that is the Ezekiel 38 prophecy being set up. All those nations that you, tribes that you see in that Ezekiel 38, you're seeing how that is literally being set up and Russia being 
Magog being called from the uh, from way north, pull, being pulled down into north of Israel to be a guard. It actually literally says that in Ezekiel 38. Re, you got to read that. And actually, let me let me read it to you, actually. Yeah. I, isn't this like a little Bible study thing? I, sh I should be able to pull this out and read it to you, right? <laughs> I Actually, I didn't I didn't plan on reading Ezekiel 38, but let me just it gives you like a great example because I ne nearly fell out of my seat in 2015 when I I mean, I was watching. I was paying attention. I was beginning to pay attention to the um the different things in the sky, but mainly what was happening here on earth, knowing, knowing those prophecies, right? And I'm getting there. Hold on. I'm a man. Can't do two things at once, right? <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Men can do lots of things only when they want to do them. <laughs> All right. So here, listen to this. I'm going to read this prophecy to you, okay? The word of the Lord came to me. This is Ezekiel 38, verse 1. I'm just going to read just through the first few, and I'm going to stop at the portion that mentions that Magog becomes a shield. Okay? The word of the Lord came to me, to Ezekiel. Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks in your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them, with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Iran, Cush and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, uh, Beth uh, Tugarma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes. Many peoples are with you. Okay? So he's basically talking about all these all these named tribes. Now, if you look into the old ancient maps, you're going to find out that these tribes are literally like Russia, Turkey, Iran, um, Libya, uh, all these different... And, and it's interesting... In especially in regards to the the Muslim religion with the Shiites and the Sunni and Arabs and Persians. And when you go into those studies, it's, it's very interesting to see the play in all this. Okay, Well, he, this is basically saying, God is saying, I am going to pull you in. I am going to pull you in. Now it says, verse 7, be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them and many days you will be mustered after many days you will be mustered okay so what basically god is saying is he's pulling these these uh nations in north of israel okay the prophecy goes on to explain where that location is in syria uh north of israel because literally what's going to happen is the prophecy says that israel is going to be attacked is going to be invaded. It's going to be attacked. Just what we're watching in the news today regards to Israel and Iran and the nations of the world trying to come together with an agreement. All this is taking place. Gog, Russia coming in 2015, that last blood moon tetrad, exactly the same month that that took place. That's why I said I fell out of my seat because I, you, you're watching and you're waiting for these events. You, you, you're, you can't... The scripture gives us just enough where we can we can figure things out. But remember, it's written thousands of years ago, so they don't they can't say, okay, they pulled all your tanks and all your your air force, you know, all that kind of stuff. They they described it in the way that they understood uh, what was given to them, and so, but yet it's so clear to see literally what's taking place. And so, <laughs> when I saw that this literally took place on the blood moon tetrad on that the that corresponded with that Jewish high holy day. How did it affect Israel? It's literally watching the setup of this happening on Israel's border. Now we've been watching from 2015 things that have been happening. It's been getting crazier and crazier, hasn't it? it hasn't been getting any lighter from 2000. Now we moved into 2017. All right, 2017. I mean, I I can go into more detail, but for the sake of time, 
let's just jump right to 2017. There was a major sign in 2017 that people were really focused. I and I was really kind of focused on and watching because I look at these things as checkpoints. Let's see what happens, especially in regards to Israel and what's happening on the, on, in the world at these checkpoints. Okay. Well, 2017 had a sign that heavily resembled the um, prophecy that's given, the description that's given in Revelation 12. Every, and a lot of you probably have heard of Revelation 12 sign, right? Well, literally, you can use, um, I was following that, right, at that point that I'm paying attention and watching and seeing what, what's happening, what's going to be happening in the world. Well, what's, what's interesting about the Revelation 12 sign, it, it came to its height it, where all the planets that are associated with this sign were all in play in the heavens. I'm going to read that prophecy to you, and then I'm going to explain to you where you can go and you can look this up. Actually, you can just go in a search engine, put in Revelation 12 sign. In the description area, I'm going to put a link to a place where you can go that kind of gives a really kind of good synopsis and gives you a visual of what happens happens uh, in the in the heavens in the celestial right, and so it was September twenty third of two thousand seventeen. It was exactly thirty three days after the great American eclipse. Remember the one that went from all the way across the United States. Okay, what also happened after that 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 eclipse? Okay, that was in August. That the if you if you remember, because <laughs> I remember I was paying attention, it was the the most expensive natural year of natural disasters ever recorded. Okay, when you add when you add the span of going into 2017 and 2018, we had we had five hurricanes. I'm talking that hit the United States, that solar eclipse that came across. Okay, I'm jumping to that. That solar eclipse that came across. We had five hurricanes from 2000, right after that, 2000, moving into 2018. We had five hurricanes. Uh, we had, you remember that cold Arctic blast that came down all the way down to the Gulf? And it just, it just destroyed. It was so much damage in regards to the cold, especially those that are not used to it. Homes. Uh, so much damage done. The wildfires uh, were raging on the West Coast. We had uh, tornadoes. We had um, we had a volcano in Hawaii. <laughs> Excuse me. We had so many different things take place. It, it's the the highest recorded in the billions of dollars ever ever. And that happened when that solar right after that 33, 33 days after that, that Revelation twelve sign came was in the sky all right and that revelation let me read that i'm going to read that to you now and please forgive me i i i know that i know that i i seem like i'm excited okay to see disaster i'm not excited to see disaster not at all <clears throat> excuse me i need i need i need another bite of this tim tam well, it is good. Those are dangerous. I gotta, I gotta save those. I gotta hide those. <laughs> no, I'll share with everybody. I'm. Hey, listen. What's interesting because I, I, I get excited about dates. I get excited about seeing prophecy being fulfilled. I'm excited because I serve the living God. That. And I, I'm looking forward to when he brings justice, when Satan is bound and removed. That's what I'm excited about. But when these things take place on the earth, they're just more and more proof that these prophecies are real and that we need to be watchful and ready. So I enjoy being in your company, so I can't help but smiling. And um, I'm enjoying a delicious Australian cookie and with some nice lemon zing tea. But when I read these things that are taking place, I'm rejoicing in the fact that I serve a living God. And these things have to take place. The, this, there's no escaping it. And um, 
it's coming. So to be aware of it is extremely important. And we can't be afraid as we move forward. So the best thing to do is to be aware, ready, and calm and be at peace. And we need that. We can only get that, truly get that through the Holy Spirit. So developing our relationship with Christ is key and important. That's why we're doing these videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why we're doing the videos the way we're doing them now. Because that's our focus. As we move forward, things are going to take place. There, there are some pretty incredible things that are going to take place. Even eclipses. I'm going to say to you now, pay attention to what's coming in regards to the eclipses. I, I mentioned the 2017 Great American Eclipse. There, there are ones coming. In 2022, 2023, and 2024. 23 and 24, you're going to have two eclipses through. One is going to be an annual or so, uh, uh, solar eclipse. It's going to come down from Oregon all the way down through Texas, down into um, South America. It's, it's, it's an, an incredible. Then it's going to be one that's going to be coming up through Mexico and going up through Maine. It's going to crisscross just, just and you can you can actually see they have some some people have made some really nice online graphics in, re in reference to watching how it crisscrosses the United States. And I was I'm mentioning the 2017 eclipse that happened right before 33 days before the Revelation 12 sign br brought tremendous amount of destruction, natural disasters that literally took place. And, and you got to pay attention because Revelation 12 starts with a sign and literally goes into a war in the heavens. And, and it ends with Satan being cast to the earth. And it says, woe to the men of the earth for the devil knows that his time is short. And he goes after, he goes after the believers. Now, when we say that, how it plays out exactly, it's not that clean. What I mean is it's not that black and white. It's going to take place, and those things are going to happen, but it plays out in, in a historical way. What happens in the heavens happens here on earth, right? The surface hitting and enhance, they're all connected. And so we, if we are truly in that time of the end, where we're watching these things take place, when... What's interesting is is watching what happens here on Earth when we see some of the, even the things, the physical things, the, the planets, the stars, all that kind of stuff, sun and moon. When we see all that fall into line with a prophecy, pay attention to what happens next. Sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes it, it'll take a month or within that month. But, in, but those 20, 2023 and 2024... When you go to the websites that I post up, go and look at literally what parts of the Earth these solar eclipses take, total solar eclipses take place, and the total lunar eclipses and when they take place and where they take place. As we move forward, we're going we're gonna to pay attention to that kind of stuff. And I want you to remind me, if you catch things, because you're going to catch things that I don't catch, send me a note. Put it up on, on, in the chat, the live chats. Discuss it. Put it in the comments on the videos. Uh, send me an email, okay? We want to be paying attention together in this. We're a community. We're paying attention to what's going on and what's, and what's ahead. So anyway, here's the, here's the, the sign. I'm going to read it to you. This is Revelation 12. It says, a great sign appeared in heaven. Now remember, this whole book of Revelation is, is referencing the, the end of days. All right. Not just the latter days, the end. OK, the end of time, the things that are going to take place. And as Jesus said, like a woman in labor, they're going to be like contractions that get closer, faster, harder. And then become until they become constant and literally happening because the, the scriptures are giving certain amount of days. So we're going to see that it's literally going to be a short amount of time, less than a decade when finally that final moment comes with literally the wrath of God being poured on this earth. So Revelation 12 is kind of like, I'm looking at it as the beginnings that you're going to see this sign. And at the end of Revelation 12, the whole chapter, you see that this war doesn't conclude completely, 
but Satan is li literally loses his his power and authority in the heavens, his access. He is cast to the earth, and his angels are cast to the earth. So all hell is going to break loose here on earth at that moment. Well, I believe personally that what we saw on September 23rd is this sign. And you're going to see it when you go and go online and, and search it. You're going to see the actual – you can use – Stellar, the Stellarium. It's a it's a program. Um, I don't know. Somebody's pulling in somewhere. I don't know if you can hear the big. I think somebody just pulled in our driveway. <laughs> it's probably a delivery service. It's on the other side of the house. So, I was warned not to go and check. So I'm not going to get up and and find out who that is because tomorrow, December thirty first. Is my birthday okay so i was born on the last day 31st day of december the last the last day of the year and so tomorrow i'll be celebrating um and i will be 50 54 years old okay so now you know what year i was born all right so so i'm not going to get up and i'm not going to check my son said it's a present <laughs> so i won't look all right let me read this a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs and in agony of giving birth. And behold, another sign appeared, a great, dra a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he would devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Know who that is? But her child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she was placed, prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished for 1260 days. Now a war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, and he, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, The salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brothers have been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to, to the place where she, she is to be nourished for a time and times and half a time. The serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to help, came to the help of the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured out of his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who kept the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And, and he stood on the sand of the sea. Okay, that's all of Revelation 12. Okay, the prophecy in reference to what happened in the heavens was that picture that we first get where it says a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs and the agony of giving birth. That 
initial part, because I wanted to read you the whole Revelation 12. I want you to see how it progressed. Because I believe that we are past that point, that checkpoint of that sign in the heavens, as it says, sign in the heavens, where if you look at September 23rd, 2017, you're literally going to see Virgo. In Virgo, the constellation of Virgo, you're going to see, if you use Stellarium, you can go back and you can see it, or you can just go online and search Revelation 12, and you're going to see images that come up that give you the picture of literally what was in the heavens. But you're going to see the moon at Virgo's feet. You're going to see the sun over her shoulder, right? Clothed in the sun, the moon at her feet. Jupiter is in her womb, is in the location where the, a birth, a child, Jupiter, the king planet, okay? And get this, Jupiter has been in like a, a retrograde motion for 42 weeks before September 23rd. It's at September 21st. After that date, Jupiter moves out as if like, right, giving birth. 42 weeks. That's, an, that's like one of the averages of a woman when she's, have, she's in labor. Jupiter's in there. You're going to see over her head, you're going to see three planets. And then you're going to see Leo, the constellation of Leo. And then the, and all of them, including it, if you look at with the naked eye in the sky, you can see that constellation, right, that has, that has nine stars and three planets, all and they're lined. The planets are right in line, 12 above her head, crowned. Can't make this stuff up. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> nobody's making this up, right? So now there was always, the, there was this big hurrah, because, right, when you're looking at symbolism, when you're looking at how the world plays out things that are important, papoo it, draw it to such extremes that, you know, they say, oh, nothing happened on that date because people were making it as if the world was going to explode, like like uh, uh, the Mayan calendar in, in 2012 and all that. No, it's a checkpoint. Think of it as a checkpoint in the next step as you get closer. And it was. What's kind of interesting with this, we see that literally war breaks out in heaven in Revelation 12. Get this now. I'm going to throw this in at you. Within less than a two-week period of that sign hitting its high point, we had a media shower start to come in from, um, uh, they call it the Draconoids, Draconoids media shower, all right? And when you get into the whole draconian thing going, okay, I'm not going to go there because there's a lot of stuff. I don't want to get into the whole new age um, astrology stuff. I want to stay with astronomy, astronomy. Okay. But I have to say, these are the names that are given and the meteors that come from that, from the meteors that come from that are literally coming from a constellation. That is a dragon. Interesting. During that moment on October 5th, which was literally two weeks from September 23rd, right? We had Donald Trump was president of the United States, and he made one of the most famous statements in regards to that hidden level that we were paying attention to, the calm before the storm, the calm before the storm. When he had all his military guys at a dinner with their wives, and he says, maybe this is the calm before the storm, Okay. We knew that war broke out in that hidden level globally. And, and they tried everything they could to get him out of office. All right. To the point where we really, in that war, had a bioweapon released to try to do multiple things. Okay. Did multiple things, but really to also affect uh, the election, to get him out of office. Interesting stuff here. That all happened, things happened in the heavens that corresponded into all that. And then, because remember, this is 33 days after the solar eclipse. We had the work at that point, we were having, remember Harvey Maria, completely Maria, that hurricane destroyed Puerto Rico, completely just destroyed Puerto Rico. You remember we had Harvey sitting in Texas, the, the border in Texas on the Gulf and just, just churning and 
coming back in. And then we had other hurricanes and we had all those other disasters. And like I said, Hawaii even had a volcano. All of that happened after those events. Okay. So can you see why I look at this kind of stuff and I say, there's something to this for us to look as we move forward. The date, I wrote some of these uh, dates down. Um, let me see if I can. So we're talking, what I would recommend is I would recommend going on the timeanddate.com, looking at some of the celestial events with eclipses, solar, the total ones, total and annular. The difference being is the total one, it's completely dark. Annular has the ring of fire that's around. It's like it's like the moon fits perfectly, and that's all by accident. Come on. When the moon fits perfectly in front of the sun. Amazing. Amazing timing in all of this. Pay attention, because I would say at least until 2029. Go from, from <laughs> January 1st. 2022 and then go for the next seven years watch the 2029 look at what parts of the earth are being touched by these both solar total solar total uh lunar okay and uh annular annular solar pay attention look at the dates okay and and watch what happens and, and for those in the United States, uh, I'm really like focusing even on that 23. It's interesting. Between 22 and, and 20, 24. Some, some pretty interesting things I believe are going to take place. And like I said, checkpoints. Checkpoints. People look at this kind of stuff and they don't know what to do with it because there's so much out there that is... Um, like when you get into astrology and stuff, that people make that mistake of putting so much weight on the creation and the prayer to either idols or or saints or anything of creation, okay, that they forget, and that's the mistake, they forget that God has put these things into place before the beginning. The Father has put these things into place before the beginning of time. Because he's not bound by time. And so when we look at these things, they are placed here for us to view and pay attention to. We're all connected. So there is influence, right? But when you have people telling you exactly what it means, exactly how you're going to be affected, or exactly when something's going to take place, let me just give you a little bit of warning in that. Don't believe it. In other words, what, I, what I'm saying that is don't hold on to date setters and don't also hold on to superstitions, okay? Yes, things have influence, absolutely, but it doesn't control your life. There's only one who controls your life and who allows you to have a will so that there's action and consequence, action, reaction, consequence. We have choice in the things that happen. We are also placed in different places. So some people are going to be affected differently than others. And we need to be here for everyone as we go through the things in this world, as these things take place. For example, when we had those all those horrific things happen in 2017, 2018, after that eclipse in the United States, right? Because I globally it was the most expensive, you know, uh, not that there hasn't been natural disasters before and the, and the amount of them, but I'm talking about where they hit and how expensive they were and the destruction that they, that they did. So what do we do about that? Like, for example, we do whatever we can help others in that process. As we move forward, there are things happening um, in our everyday uh, life in, in what's governing us and in our jobs and our schools, we can see the war that's literally taking place on this earth where we are literally being set up for the wrath of God coming. One of the, one of the wrath, one of the things that happened in revelation 
in regards to the wrath of God is is pestilence, where it says that literally a quarter of the earth will die from famine and pestilence. But when you start seeing the setup of how many people on this earth are even like getting this uh, mRNA, this this whole jab thing, and what it does to immune system, and and it's you're watching a setup. Type in in a search engine uh, how many people globally have the jab. All right, and you can you're going to see um, where they were rejoicing the fact that they got two billion people uh, getting the jab. Okay, globally, it's a goal. It's one of the goals. Two billion. But when you understand, you almost have eight billion people. Okay, on this globe, right? And you do the math. You see that that's a quarter of the total world population. Now, of course, we don't know exact, but we're just giving examples. Well, when you read the prophecies and you understand that literally it says that a quarter of the world will um, perish because of pestilence. Well, what is that? That's exactly what we, quote, have been kind of going through this whole virus and all this kind of stuff. So can you see a kind of a setup of what's coming by the actions of evil actions? selfish actions as morality breaks down as the selfishness of men break down right romans one we're seeing that this is a progression towards all of this and what's stated in the heavens does not dictate god has set things into place to kind of show us that these things will happen and, and listen there's going to be a lot of false stuff taking place also happening signs and wonders that Jesus says that in the end times there will be those that will be like a false Christ, a false savior, a false Messiah, that they will have tools and abilities to do these signs and wonders, to deceive those here on the earth. So as we watch the things that happening in regards to the celestial signs, we have to be extremely careful to watch what is what are we p being played. The controllers in this world how are they going to play us and how are they going to use the celestial? Okay. When you see NASA talking with Catholic, the Catholic Church, trying to figure out how to help the human race understand or be prepared for the possible discovery of alien life. When you see these things being played and set up, that's that's what I want us to all be aware of, okay? And that and that's what we've been doing this whole time is we've been coming together. We started with entertainment in Tom Hanks. We went to the we went to the election, and then we moved from the election then right into the this whole vax thing. You can see the deception that's being used as a war is going on on this earth. Is it also happening in the heavens? Is Revelation 12 coming to a completion where the Satan is literally then these forces at an enhanced level hit the earth and then we start seeing things happen on the surface more and more? It, it's a, it is. It, 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 can you see? Are you getting like a little bit of the picture here? Now, now the thing is, is that, like I said, we're not sitting here to drum up fear. Not at all. If anything, what I'm saying is, hey, the bridge is out. Stop the car so that you don't get hurt. So you don't drive off the bridge. That's why I'm trying to help people understand that you literally need to understand who you are and how important you are, that there is a God who loves you and he has made a way out. And so, and that way out is through his son. Believing who he was, accepting him, repenting from your sin, right? Sin is what brings that penalty. Sin brings the death. Sin brings the wrath. So if we can get that cleared up as individuals, not through an organization, not through a business, not through a, a religious whatever. No, personally, you and God, you got the message and we have it. We have the testimony been given to us for thousands of years, looking at this history book of literally what took place. And we're given a testimony of the great news. 
And we're seeing how even in the scriptures, there's so many things that are in reference to the heavens and to the different things that took place in the heavens. And God, now remember, he's the creator. So he can do things that we don't expect. Like, for example, in, in this past, past year, there was the discovery of that Leonard Meteor Comet. Leonard Comet that has been going through this whole year has been going through. It has one of the longest tails on this comet. It is it is so big that they say that the, the the they I think I mentioned this before. It was like if you took Venus and, and and the Earth and the distance between them, the tail is as long as that. Okay, I think it's like between three around three hundred between three hundred to five hundred million miles long. Okay, and it just interesting that. Right at the beginning of December, you it was like the best time to see this in the sky at a certain place. It's just interesting to watch. Now, this they didn't know it was coming. It was just discovered. It was like came out of left field, right? Like some of the other comets that we see. And they then they then they can take the mathematics and figure out the orbit and figure out well when was the last time this was here? They figure about forty thousand years ago. Okay, they don't know. They're just seeing. Well, if we did the math, that's what it would be, okay? But what if I just say, listen, God, you know, we're just seeing these things appear, and we're watching so much emphasis on the skies today and what's coming. I just say pay attention. I can't explain it all, but remember, I can say that we have a surface level that we live on, that we got to take care of things. As things bubble to the surface, as we live our lives, we know now things that are happening, the great deception in that hidden level in our world, our governments, the families, all of that going on, okay? That enhanced level is key and important. That spiritual realm, right? That's what we need to really focus on because this is where we're going when our physical bodies are done. This is where we're going. This is our going forward and we have to have a relationship with the living God and this is why we have to sit and talk about it this is why we have we got to understand understand him understand his love understand his grace understand the mission the mystery of these prophecies given thousands of years and we just happen to live at like near the climax like like at near the these ending now I'm not setting dates or anything like that, but I'm just saying, hold it. Pay attention. These things are not happening for no reason. And where things were localized, remember, this is one of the things. People said, well, these always have happened. Yeah, they have happened in the past, but look at the size, complexity, and, and location of these things. They have been, they were so very localized. And then they moved to continents. Now it's global. Now it's the whole world. Everybody's connected. Okay. What's interesting is that there is an eclipse in 2029 that encapsulates everybody. Is touched by, except there's only one one country that's not touched is New Zealand. Okay. I was looking at, you know, at what part of it is this eclipse? It literally touches everybody except New Zealand. <laughs> but I just thought that was fascinating because I I believe that sometimes. These, these, the timing in this, we might not know exactly why. We live in an age that we can find out because we have uh, devices in our pockets that can hear information that happens across the, 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 the globe in seconds. You know, but like people that were studying these things years ago, they didn't have that access, they didn't have those tools. All right, those wise men, okay, they had to pay attention and they had, they were, they were a lot smarter than any of us. And in understanding the in all levels, surface hidden and enhanced, right? Or I should say enhanced, and the, that 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 hidden, and then they they put it into action and they showed up to worship the living Messiah. I mean, so um, yeah, so these are the things I really kind of look to look at and pay attention to. Um, I wanted to bring it to your attention here at the end of 2021. We're not slowing down. And there are things happening now on that surface level that's going to affect us all, even in New York. So many different things um, in regards to 
this this tool that's being used against us because it, there's a, a bigger purpose that's in that hidden level that um, has to do with economics and global control, power, money, all of that's associated with this, okay? A, a movement. So what is God going to do? We need to be praying. We're going to be praying. We're going to pray right now. But we need to pray and continue to pray and, and be active in letting people know and helping people as things take place. Because as we see revelation play out, there are going to be things that nobody control can control but God. And there's going to be a moment literally where the wrath of God will be poured. The cup will be full and the end of society as we know it will play out. I'm going to also throw this one other thing. There is a channel on YouTube called Suspicious Observers, okay? Some of you have probably seen it. They do a five-minute every morning daily show, and they look at the sun. They pay attention to the sun and its effects on the earth and the gravitational uh, uh, and the, um, uh, the North Pole, the South Pole, and, and how the magnetic north and the south are moving and, and can go into a flip. Pay attention to this. This is another way we can pay attention, right? Now, I might not agree every, with everything that's said on, on that show, um, but I, I enjoy it. I think it's, it's very smart to pay attention to and watch. I love the guy who, who does it. He, he's, uh, he's a funny guy. Um, he has got a, a very dry, good, dry sense of humor, but he's serious about it, what he does, and he... Um, Like I said, it these he he's like one of those people that will like look at history past and look at the future. The dating might not be all correct, but he doesn't say that the dating is correct, but he's saying that we are on schedule. We are on schedule for something. And he's not talking biblically. He's talking about just things in physics, basically that he's watching and the history of things that have been in play. And so I say pay attention to those things, but understand Take it a step further and understand that there's a God who's in control. And in reference to bi the biblical things that are coming, there are going to be events that will take place that we cannot predict. So we need to be ready, first with, with who we are with God. Okay, And then as we do that, right, the, the, and those are the two commandments that Christ gave us, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart soul and mind love your neighbor as yourself so as you're developing all of that th then you're in right standing with him okay but you have you have to come to him you have to come to him and you've got to present and and, I, and i'm saying in a way that like i'm talking to you now okay um in our relationship god i encourage you take the time to talk to him if you've never done that before talk to him Ask him to reveal himself to you. And listen, start reading. Start reading. It's, it's, it's very important. If it's important to you, then you'll do it. Because these things are coming. All these things are coming. Remember Noah. How many years did he proclaim the word of God, warning people, while he literally built a boat and then there was that day where the rain, the, the, the earth broke open and the rain started falling. And at that point, it was too late. So I would just say, you can find peace. Right, Rooster? Right? <laughs> Mr. Rooster, my only rooster now. Okay, we had, we had our other rooster. I think I mentioned that to you. But this is, this is the, the man, the man who's taking care of all the ladies now. And uh, good guy. Um, all right, so let's pray. Let's pray together. We'll close. And we have a some a little lemon zinger. I would ask that you, you would pray for me in regards to what's ahead. God has opened up a, a, a new opportunity with me in regards to uh, a new mission locally, uh, right in my own town. And so... I'm going to give you more detail probably in the next couple of weeks, but just um, bear with me and uh, just pray for me. Just bring me before God and um, 
and my family and those that are involved. I'll mention their names, uh, Lewis and Leland, and just want to just pray that, um, and Ed too. Um, but Lewis and Leland uh, will be working with me on a project, and we ask that God's hand is is very strong in the area of protection, guidance, and calling. And so, um, yeah, I'm kind of keeping this vague in 2021. Don't worry, it will be revealed in 2022. Um, just, just another thing that God has literally put in my lap. And so, let's let's go before the Lord in prayer now. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for this this day that I have out here that you kept the rain away. Lord God, I can feel the drips, the, the raindrops coming now, and I just pray that you would uh, keep, keep it away until, until we're done, Father, with this live stream. I thank you that uh, I had the privilege of meeting with all uh, my family and friends here up online. Father, I thank you for them. Uh, may your name be glorified in our relationships together. Thank you for the... Uh, I ask for a blessing on all those that participate, Father. They send gifts, uh, just wonderful things, just showing their love. And they provide, Father. There are many out there um, that, um, like Douglas out there, uh, just uh, very generous. Uh, Barbara, very generous out there with um, with gifts uh, to keep this, this uh, ministry going as we not only touch, uh, keep the... The time that we come together here on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, but also uh, in regards to the orphanage, Father, as we were able to help get all the coats needed for all the all the kids in um, in Pakistan. Each each kid for this winter got a coat, and we want to thank you for that. Thank you for the hard work that Paris, Arena, and the team in getting all of that done uh, for for that those kids and the orphanage. Lord God, I, I pray for each person that, that's here with me now. Lord, there are things going on in their lives. I pray for John out there. You know who he is. And, Father, right now going through a, a tough time, I pray that you would please help him um, through this to make the right choices, Lord God. I pray for all the families out there that are affected by these uh, mandates and these push of the jabs, Father. And as we watch, literally more and more people suffer from heart conditions, die from heart conditions, Father. Pray for their families. Please help people to wake up to what's going on so that they don't continue in the same direction. Lord God, I pray. I understand that this is a part of us keeping watch uh, in regards to what's coming. We have to face those hard things. But, Lord, we can be here for each other in more than one way. First and foremost, in prayer to you, asking you to do the impossible, Father, to do uh, help bring peace to people, help them through these tough times, uh, Lord God. Uh, but also for us, Father, to be able to help them, physically help them with uh, material or funding to accomplish what they need accomplished to recover as people go through these hard times. I pray, Lord, that your name is glorified in everything that we do. Uh, I pray, Father, for the prayer requests that are being, are being sent in online. Lord God, you see them all. You know them all. The people that request prayer in the live streams, Father, I bring them before you. I ask, Lord, that you would help them uh, as we see even people suffering with with the deaths of loved ones, um, husbands, and wives, Father. Please help them and bring them comfort. Lord God, help people, Father, even during this winter season uh, where we have a lot of even just regular flu that's going around. We know, Father, that it's marketed now and used for an agenda that's, that's horrible. But while we're here on this earth, and this earth is in, a, in its cursed state, Lord God, only you can bring um, full full redemption, uh, protection, guidance, wisdom, health, and, um, and and everything that needs to be done, Lord, uh, to keep us going as your children here now. We turn to you. We ask and we abide in you. We present it before you. And we don't worship the creation, Father. We worship you, the creator, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we thank you. Thank you for it. And we close now in the name and under the authority of your Son, our Lord, our soon and coming King, 
In his name, in Jesus' name, Yeshua's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, guess what? It is now starting to <laughs> come down. <laughs> Maybe you see the drops on the camera or not. So I'm going to I'm gonna be moving inside. Uh, but everybody here is um, out here just in, uh, enjoying our time with all of you. Uh, we will be together uh, New Year's Day at our um, at our uh, world time uh, worldwide community prayer on Saturday night at eight o'clock. Lord willing, as it all works out. So e either if it's either if it's live uh, live streamed or it's re recorded and um, set up ahead of time, because there's a couple things I would love to do with you, but I can only do it on a recording. I can't do it as a live stream. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that yet, so we'll find out. Either way, 8 o'clock, Saturday night, Eastern Standard Time, Worldwide Community Prayer will come together. If you have prayer requests, email them to me, info at frjr.org. Okay, with that, God bless and have a blessed finish to 2021. We're moving forward in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, bye-bye.